Horology, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the urban gentry. It's continuing mission to explore strange new watches, to seek out cool vintage pieces with pure class, to boldly go where no watch channel has gone before. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing my top five Swiss watch brands under $500. Now, this is a subject I'm emailed about almost daily, uh, so long overdue. I do apologize if you've been waiting for this one. Quick disclaimer before we get into it. This is, of course, only a top five. I know there are hundreds of brands out there. I would love to make this a top 10, a top 50 even, we haven't got all day, so I better get on with it. Now, of course, before I get into this video, I'll do a quick wristwatch check, and I actually am wearing a Swiss piece, but not a brand new Swiss piece, because today we are only discussing brand new pieces. This is a vintage Britix chronograph from, I think it was the 1940s, I bought recently. I'm wearing it on a British regiment NATO strap. Actually, it's with the cloth, with the nylon, sorry, loop there. And we're joined by the NYPD, as always. Uh, and I, you're probably wondering, why am I not in uh, the Watchtower? Well, I actually, this is the second time uh, I'm trying to record this video. Unfortunately, for some reason, it was uh, bring your kids to work day. Uh, so it was just too noisy in there today. These are all watches that I have personally had experience with. You guys know, I only talk about watches that I've handled, that I know. And how I've picked my top five is, They've got to have style, they've got to be tastefully done, they've got to have quality. And these brands are at the top mainly because of their horological achievements, their heritage. Some are newer brands, but have still achieved so much. Anyway, enough of the introduction, let's get on with it. Number five, let's get the most obvious brand out of the way. It is, of course, Hamilton. Uh, now, they are owned by the Swatch Group now. Founded in 1892, Swatch took them over, I think, in 1984. But they have an amazing legacy. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Hamilton. They've been in over 400 movies. They have a long involvement with making military watches, World War II, World War I, Vietnam. Uh, the Korean War, you name it. Not to mention their marine chronometers and the heyday of, of the brand, which was the 50s. Uh, just to name a few of their icons, probably the most famous is undoubtedly the Ventura, that beautiful Cadillac winged inspired triangular shape. Very, very much an, an acquired taste, famously worn by Elvis Presley, of course. What do I recommend under $500 from Hamilton. Well, we can't make this video without talking about their historic khaki line of military and field watches. My favorite has to be the H91419363, which is 38 millimeter manual wind. And just look at the design of this. It really hasn't changed since World War II. You've got that classic field watch layout with the 24 hour markings towards the inside, those large legible Arabic numerals. Really nice and thin because it's only manual wind, you haven't got that rotor to worry about. Inside we have the ETA 2804, thanks to Swatch of course. 50 meters water resistant, clean, classic, it's what they are great at doing and and you'll see this in all the all the watches that I talk about today they just have a really beautiful layout um, another alternative and this is an old favorite I've mentioned this watch many many times it is the Jazzmaster line from Hamilton and this really to me embodies everything that I think about stylistically when I think of Hamilton. There's beautiful Dauphine hands, the, the very almost art deco, you could say, curves in the case. We have Sapphire Crystal, again, this is the day date version. I'm talking about the H32505751. 50 meters water resistance. Inside we got the H40, which is basically 
uh, the ETA 2836-2. This is just a smidgen over $500 on Amazon, but you know, if you can afford that extra 10 bucks, it's certainly worth it. Very tastefully done. It's 40 millimeters in diameter, extremely symmetrical layout. I just think it's, it's absolute class. And you get a display back, which is a hell of a lot of watch for the money. Staying within the car key family, another favorite is the H70595593. This time we've got slightly larger numerals, a little bit more detail, syringe style hands, very precise seconds and minutes track there. I love the strap this comes on with, with this distressed leather and the rivets there, giving it more of a, I guess you could say, aviation feel. This time we got the H10, so it's just the date, based on the 28-24, simple case, large crown, for a measly $369 currently on Amazon. I mean, it's I, it's very difficult to beat. I, I love the layout of this. Again, with the military markings, the 24-hour markings. Another one we should we should really mention now. I've I've done the review of the the automatic version of this, which was famously in the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar, worn by um, the actor uh, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, however, this is the Quartz version, stylistically very, very similar. At first glance, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The Interstellar one is, I think, around about um, between five and a thousand. I forget, have a look back at the, that review. But this one is only 350 bucks because it is, of course, quartz. But you get that same aesthetic, that classic Flieger B style layout with the uh, 55 minute markings going around the outside and then the 12 hours towards the center, that semi skeletonized hands. It's gorgeous. Uh, 42 millimeters, so the same size and proportions as the Interstellar. Uh, I'm just going to call it the Interstellar, the Interstellar um, car key. So Hamilton, I mean, you know, I've barely, barely scratched the surface. I, I could do a whole video on a, probably about 50 Hamilton watches you can find under $500. They rarely rule the roost in terms of heritage, in terms of quality, in terms of design. They have it all. The only reason it's not at number one, I think, is because Perhaps I've banged on about it, rabbited on about it too much. Number four, Victorinox. This is another hugely important brand that I talked about recently in my, uh, uh, the, what was it, the seven watches for surviving a zombie apocalypse, right? And I wanna draw more attention to Victorinox because I feel at the entry level, their quality is second to none. I've been a big fan of their watches since before I had a channel. I used to own the Maverick Chronograph. The quality was there and that's that's something that has definitely been carried over from the from the years and years, decades of experience making knives. Of course, they're the famous knife maker. So they were founded in 1884. That's 134 years ago. They're famous for their military knives, especially. And in 2005, they actually bought their biggest rival, which was, I think it's pronounced Wenger, uh, W-E-N-G-E-R. And they were long-time rivals. Victorinox kind of won that battle, and now Victorinox are the dominant supplier of knives to the Swiss military. And they've been doing that for, well, uh, since they started, so over 100 years. They expanded into cutlery, into travel gear. For me, it's very important because it's one of the first knives I ever owned as a child. I, I never forget it, those, those very distinctive red you know, even though actually their logo is, is symbolic of their military involvement. So hence Swiss army knives and all the rest of it. Anyway, in 1989, they diversified into watchmaking and they carried that expertise with manufacturing steel-based products into watches. And they've just exploded. So let's just get the first one out of the way first, which was of course the Inox. I talked about this recently, an incredible, beautifully engineered watch. It's, it is quartz, but it's quartz for a reason. It's designed to be hard as nails. If you remember that video, I've, I have reviewed it. I'll leave a link, have a look back. This is a, a humongous, but deliberately big watch. 200 meters water resistant. You can get it in a, a whole plethora of beautiful colors. Obviously to aid legibility in low light. My favorite is the, the version with the dive time bezel. It's around about $450 on Amazon currently. Now they tested the heck out of this. I think something like 
I don't know, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of, of, of tests. Everything from running them over with a 64 ton tank to putting them in washing machines. These things are designed to withstand severe temperature variations, shock, magnetism, you name it. They are, in my opinion, probably some of the hardest uh, watches ever made. They really are hard as nails. Quite interesting, almost Nautilus aesthetic. I love the diving version because it has the bezel and I think it uses that scalloped edge bezel so beautifully. It really does. If they made an automatic version, I would buy it tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And if Victorinox, if you're watching, please do. But moving on, they also do very traditional watches as well. My favorite has to be their infantry line. And again, the military involvement is a recurring theme. Classically done, tasteful, uh, almost minimalist to the point of it's, you know, nothing superfluous. If you look at the Swiss Quartz GMT model, it looks a little bit like the Rolex Explorer 2. However, it's definitely got its own style. This is only $179, it comes on mesh. You get the 24 hour bezel, 100 meters water resistant, syringe style hands, anti-reflective sapphire crystal. So this is 40 millimeters. It has a fourth hand for the GMT function in a red, again, kind of in keeping with their color scheme. A very subtle but wonderful little uh, rail track for the minutes uh, running around the outside of the dial. Now let's move on to something automatic. And this has got to be my favorite watch that they currently sell. But I saw this in Macy's, believe it or not, the classic infantry. So this is 40 millimeters. Again, it's a field watch with the 24 hour markings. So we got sapphire crystal, anti-reflective coating. Inside we got the ETA 28. 24-2, it deserves more attention. I love it, I absolutely love it. Just simple three-handed date, what more do you want? Number three, well, it's an old favorite of the channel and I've reviewed two of the watches I'm gonna talk about. It is, of course, Glycine. Now, when I reviewed an old Glycine, they were independent. Now they've been bought by Invicta and this has caused a little bit of controversy. Some people are very anti-Invicta because of, well, their aggressive marketing. I've, I've done a whole video discussing my views on Invicta, so have a look at that. However, I have to say, I've seen before and after and the quality is unchanged. Now, I know there has been a trend of close to these people sharing Glycine watches saying, look what I, Invicta's doing and, and, and some of them more garish models. However, if you actually look at when they were designed, a lot of them are, most of them are from the pre, the pre Invicta buyout. Unfortunately, it's, it's in a lot of people's uh, imagination, so to speak. I think it's a good thing because Glycine weren't doing too well in a very competitive market. With Invicta behind them, they've got the funding to maintain production of these hugely iconic watches. It's still being done in the same factory. In fact, it's only got better because the prices have now dropped dramatically that you can buy two of their most iconic watches under $500. We are, of course, talking about the Airman, the legendary Airman introduced in 19... 53, a year before the Rolex GMT Master, worn in Vietnam and has a huge military following, not to mention being worn by the astronaut Pete Conrad during the Gemini 5 space flight. So yeah, you can't really ask more for, uh, for an iconic watch. Now, a lot of the automatic versions are unfortunately between $500 and $1,000. If you can stretch that much, go for it. You can get the world time version, the quartz. There's a beautiful blue dial and there's also, uh, I believe, a, a kind of sand colored dial version. However, I think the sweet spot undoubtedly is, where is it? Let me just find it. The Combat Sub. Now I've reviewed two of them, I think. I've owned one. I love them, I love them. 42 millimeters, but only 11 millimeters thin, which is for a dive watch, quite impressive considering they're water resistant to 200 meters. So we have the GL224, which is 2824 ETA, of course, unidirectional uh, dive time bezel, sapphire crystal. They come in a really nice variety of styles. 
somewhere in between a super ocean and a submariner. Now, the great thing is you can't accuse it of being a ripoff of either because it very much has its own style. You can get ones with batons or 24 hour markings, more like a field watch, or you can have Arabic numerals. There's two tones, there's, uh, there's PVD versions, there's blue, green, orange, just get so much choice. And they're wonderful, they're wonderful. You can get them on the bracelet or a rubber strap or even a NATO strap. And I, I gotta admit, I do miss, I do miss my old glycine. Uh, don't forget to check out the, the Combat 6, which is their more kind of basic field watches, much more simpler. And those are around about 400, very tastefully done, ETA, automa you know, automatic, the rest of it. Number two. Okay, so who's at number two? Well, you might be a bit surprised at this, but it has to be Federic Constant. I haven't actually reviewed one, although I've had plenty of experiences with their watches. I have a few friends that own them. I will get one in, I will get one in. And I came this close to buying the world time. Now, there's a reason why I'm including Federic Constant, especially so high up in the list. Now, they were only founded in 1988, so they're, they're quite new to the game. In 2016, they were bought, or they became a subsidiary of Citizen. Since the 80s, they really have been pushing and achieving so much. Let me just give you a rundown of what they've done in, in, in quite a short amount of time, which is very impressive. They already started having their own in-house calibers in 2008. In 2007, they developed their own silicon-based escapement wheel. In 2008, they also managed to produce their own tourbillon, which again, quite impressive. In 2015, they released their first smartwatch, which was a hybrid of um, you know, traditional watchmaking and smartwatch technology. They, they're doing it again with this a hybrid, which is a very smart approach to smartwatch technology. I really urge you to have a look what they're doing. I think they, they're doing smartwatches right, you know? Um, hopefully we'll cover it at some point. Now, what drew me to their world timer was, it had a unique mechanism in the crown to be able to adjust the discs that displayed the different time zones with the crown. Very, very impressive, uh, considering its price range. But what I like about Federico Constant is, stylistically, they're so on it. I know, sometimes they are referred to as the poor man's Patek, because stylistically, some of their dress watches, at first glance, you think, oh, it's a Calatrava. I like that, I like that. Now, you're not gonna get the tourbillon and the in-house movements and the you know, their, their famous um, silicon escapement or whatever at the entry level price. But they do offer some very nice classic and elegant dress watches and quartz based watches with some really nice complications. This is my favorite. And if I was spending the money, I'd buy this in a heartbeat. And this is the Federic Constant Persuasion, certainly has persuaded me, classic moon phase. Cartier kind of, aesthetic with the Romans. So we got month, day, date, moon phase, all in a very sophisticated, well-balanced look. Inside we've got the quartz caliber FC303. They also have a slightly more traditional one, uh, which is a, just a smidgen under 500. This is not part of the persuasion line. It's a little bit more simple. And these are both 60 meters water resistant. You can get this particular one. This is the FC260WR5B5. So this is 40 millimeters in a choice of gold tone or stainless steel. Very nice, very elegant. And you know, if you need the dress watch, you want something quality that is extremely tastefully done, but you don't want to break the bank. Perhaps you don't wear a dress watch that much. This is the place to go. I, I really do feel that. And of course, if you want to go in-house with an automatic, sky's the limit. I mean, you, you could go and you could spend several grand with uh, Frederic Constant and they do offer some beautifully decorated, refined pieces. Anyway, let's see what we can get for an automatic. And I recommend the FC303 SN5B6 with semi-Romans and stick markers that are applied, beautiful leaf hands, this is in a 40 millimeter case, 
50 meters water resistant. It's a modified Salita SW200, which you know we've discussed many, many times, 38 hour power reserve, etc. Hackable hand winding, date, classic white dial. I love it, I, I really do. I, I think it's a, it's a great size for most people. Uh, and then you've got their slimline collection. Now, unfortunately, you're only gonna get these in quartz because, well, as you would imagine, to make a movement, a mechanical movement with this thin would, uh, would cost a fortune. But um, yeah, so they're quartz based, extremely tastefully done. You have a fantastic range of options here from ultra modern minimalism to ultra traditional classic breguet hands, hobnail dials and Roman numerals. Men's, ladies, you name it. We're talking about $300. So minimalist, some of them. Plain dials, two-handers, sub-seconds, you name it. I love them. And of course, sapphire crystal. Um, so you don't really have to worry about them. Just set them once and it's done. And number one, it can only be Tissot, right? Tissot, an old favorite. Uh, I've owned many Tissot. Actually, before I had the channel, I had the PR C200, which was a chronograph quartz. I loved it, I loved it. I think it actually it was my first Swiss watch when I was a teenager and it, it's, it's still, looking back, it's still a handsome piece. Anyway, it's the oldest brand that we're talking about today. And it's interesting because recently I've noticed they're trying to bring back the pocket watch on their Instagram. There's a good reason why the pocket watch. They were actually the first to mass produce the pocket watch and they also the first to produce a pocket watch with two time zones. This was all the way back in 1853. They also produced the first anti-magnetic watch in 1929. In the 1930s they teamed up with Omega and I think it was Le Mania, if you remember my video about this uh, to produce some uh, truly breathtaking chronographs. Uh, the famous 33.3 caliber based chronographs of the 1930s. This was in response to the Great Depression. These big boys all teamed up, Amiga, Le Mania and Tissot to, to create some of the most exquisite and memorable chronographs. They also have won many awards uh, and one of them for a watch we're actually talking about today from the Le Loc uh, range. Le Loc is named in honor of the place they're still based in in Switzerland. So they were founded all the way back in 1853 uh, by the Tissot family. But their innovation didn't stop with, you know, just traditional watchmaking. In the, in the 70s, I think it was 1971, they introduced the world's first plastic watch. Uh, and certainly the first Swiss plastic watch. And it kind of makes sense because they were then bought by Swatch in 1983. So I wonder if, well, it's, it's probably no secret that Swatch wouldn't have been able to make their hugely uh, recognizable plastic watches without a little bit of that knowledge and expertise uh, they got from acquiring Tissot. So their legacy in terms of the, what they've done contributed to the story of horology is is undeniable. Doesn't stop there. In 1999, they introduced the T-Touch, which was in a way a precursor to smartwatches because it had a touch screen, um, a sapphire crystal, which was, you could actually press, and it had full ABC capabilities. So altimeter, barometer, compass, which is very, very impressive indeed. Anyway, enough of that amazing legacy, let's discuss some of their watches. Their first stop to, for me has to be the Tissot Powermatic 80, which is based on the CO7111. This movement is a newer ETA movement that actually debuted with Tissot. And it's called the Powermatic 80 because it's got an 80 hour power reserve. Basically an evolution of the 2824 slowed down to improve its uh, performance over time and in doing so, it, uh, it, uh, this incredible power reserve. I love the way on Tissot watches they've incorporated the T for Tissot into the seconds hand. They're 100 meters water resistant, very minimalist. And let's not forget, at this price range, you can also get the famous Visodate, which is an old channel favorite. Now, something Tissot are also famous for is this, their 70s racing chronographs. Now, you're not gonna get a chronograph, an automatic chronograph uh, at this price range. However, 
they have an extremely impressive variety of racing quartz based chronographs. Their newest V8 is really, really nice, very reminiscent of the Speedmaster. However, it does have its own style, shall we say. Nice V shaped layout with a date at the six o'clock, tachymeter running around the outside on that bezel. So let's discuss the Leloc as, uh, as I previously mentioned. Now, I did review one briefly, have a look back at um, the video on watches um, we bought in Switzerland. My friend GCR managed to snag one of these for an absolute bargain. They actually set records and beat watches far, far way out of this price range in terms of their performance. Some of them are cost certified. There's an astonishing amount of detail on these, especially when it comes to the dial. Got lovely, uh, almost a hobnail. Some of them have a guilloche effect, applied numerals. Now, this is my favorite, and you might be a bit shocked at this. Now, I did recommend this in my alternatives to, uh, I think it was Daniel Wellington or, or Movement or one of those. And it's the every time, and in particular, the 38 millimeter version, the T109410. So it's just quartz, minimalist, definitely Bauhaus inspired. It comes on a NATO strap. I think it's one of the most understated, beautifully designed. It's got sapphire crystal. This is only $135, but a bargain. Now these cost the same as the aforementioned fashion watches, but are infinitely classier, infinitely better in quality. You're getting a Swiss quartz in there by a brand that, well, as we've discussed, has left a lasting impression on the history of horology. Anyway, guys, that's it for my top five. Uh, I waffled on far too much, but that's the thing. I barely scratched the surface and I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, what about this brand? What about that brand? I might do a part two. There's just so much at this price range, but these are all brands that you can be proud of, that you can hand down to the next generation that are going to last. Please do share your opinions, comments, questions, queries, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.